casting out devils. And in verse 41, and behold, there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet, and besought him that he would come to his house. For he had one only, only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay to die. But as he went, the people began to throng him, surround him, Jesus. And there was a woman having an issue of blood 12 years. Coincidence that the daughter was 12? That had a need? And the woman had a need for 12 years. That spent all her living upon the physicians and needed could be healed. She came up behind him and touched the border of his garments, and immediately her issue of blood dried up. And Jesus said, Who touched me? And when all denied, Peter and them said unto him, Master, the multitude is strong in thee, pressing against thee, and says thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive the virtue is gone out of me. There are those who bump against Christ, and there are others who touch him. There are others who just run into Christ, and there are others who meet Christ. Say that, say that. They said, Lord, a lot of folks are touching you. He said, no, but this was a touch of faith. <laughs> amen, amen. If you're going to reach God, it's going to take faith. For God to feel what you feel, you got to have some faith yes. that he's able. Yes. Yes. And the woman saw that she was not hid. She came trembling and fell down before him. She declared unto him before all the people what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Doctor, be of good comfort, for thou faith that may be whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to Jairus, Thou daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now let's back up a little bit to Israel coming out of bondage under the Egyptians. They've gotten to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea has been split, and now they're getting ready to go into the promised land of God. And Moses said, picked out 12 people and said, go in and spy the land and tell us everything that's going on. And Joshua and Caleb and the other 10, they went in and Joshua and Caleb went up the mountain way. The others went down towards the valley way. And when they got up towards the mountain way, it was summer fruits of grapes. They cut off one cluster of grapes that was so big it took two people to carry it on a pole. Some grapes. <laughs> Those were good grapes. <laughs> and they began to see. And down in the valley, they saw the strong cities and the chariots and the giants. And after 30 days, after 30 days, they went back to Moses carrying the cluster of grapes. Wow. I wanted to emphasize that because what grapes you know can stay outside and still be looking good 30 days later. Amen. And they said, indeed, the land is a land of milk and honey. Look at the grapes we brought back. Look at all there that is there. And Joshua and Caleb showed Moses the grape. But the other ten said, yes, what they say is true. But there's also giants in the land. There's also strong cities and chariots of iron. We can't win. We can't beat them. And Joshua and Caleb said, no, we 
report of the Lord. The report of the Lord. Hear me now, if you follow me. Jairus was following Jesus to get his daughter healed while she was sick. And as they were headed to Jairus' house, the Bible said there was a woman with an issue of blood. Twelve long years she suffered with this illness. Jarvis' daughters only was making it to twelve. <coughs> Two contrasting people. One was real old that had sickness for twelve years and spent all she had trying to get well. Here was a twelve-year-old girl, girl that was spending everything her dad had trying to get well. But instead of spending a lot of money, he sought out Jesus. But the woman spent all she already had and had to seek out Jesus. No matter if you got everything or you just spent everything, you still need Jesus. Man, man. He ran while he was walking to Jairus' house. The woman came up and touched him. Have you ever wanted somebody's attention or they're trying to get something done for you and everybody interrupts you? You got something important you're trying to talk about and while you're trying to show folks works and assignment, other folks are coming up and say, excuse me a minute. Or they, they interfere and you just step there trying to be all patient, but you're trying to get past what you're trying to say. Can you imagine the anxiety on Jarvis as knowing his daughter was dying and Jesus coming now, somebody to touch him and Jesus stops. Now Jarvis didn't say nothing, but y'all know how we are. Man, what you stopping for? Somebody touched me. So what, man? Come on. We're trying to get to my house. No, hang on. What do you mean, hang on? Who touched me? Who touched me? I'm going to touch you in a minute. <laughs> Who touched me? And Peter said, no, Lord, there's so many people around. How is it that we can find out who touched you? And Jesus said, no, you don't understand. It was not just an ordinary touch. It was a touch with somebody that had a need. Somebody that had a problem. Somebody that had a bad situation. There. And when they touched me, they touched me with a touch of faith. Amen. Whose report will you believe? The old lady had believed the report of the doctors month after month, year after year. Spending everything that she had trying to get well. But she heard about a man named Jesus. Realizing the doctor report wasn't going to get any better. Realizing that whatever she had was not going to get healed. Realizing that she done spent everything that she had. What is it that made her go up and touch the heel? of God's garment, it was the report that she heard, that he opened the eyes of the blind, mm -hmm. that he made the lame walk, he made the dumb talk. It was the report that she heard about a man from Nazareth, whose report will you believe? Mm -hmm. Here and now, Jarvis and Jesus are starting to walk again, but by this time, a soldier comes up and says to Jarvis, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughters just died. And Jesus heard this and he said, just have faith and believe. Everything is going to be all right. Wait a minute. This soldier just came and said, my daughter is dead. You're saying... Just believe and everything is going to be all right. Whose report will you believe? Here it was now. He knew his daughter was sick. He knew his daughter wasn't doing well. He knew his daughter could die of this disease. And he went to go get some help. Now he's standing on the dusty road and his soldier come and said, Your daughter is dead. There's no use to getting the master She's gone, the breath is gone, she's laying there, nothing cold as ice, and now you see this and you hear this, but Jesus says, just believe. Mm -hmm. Whose report are you going to believe, church, yes. when hell is busting loose in your life? <laughs> Whose report are you going to believe? God says you're rich, your bank account, and the devil says you're broke. Amen. God says you're healed. 
says you're sick. God says you're the head, the head, the devil says you're the tail. Oh, whose report are you going to believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. We will believe what God says and not what my body says. I got to believe that my God is more than able. I got to believe Amen. that my God is a healer. I got to believe my God is a deliverer. I got to believe my God is a way maker. I will, I will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. It don't matter what folks say, but it does matter what my God says. Amen. It don't matter what people say. I will believe the report of the Lord. Yes. You'll find yourself looking at your situations and your circumstances when the bill said it's due. You get all worried about it, the light bill do, the gas bill do, the car no do, the house no do. Oh, oh, what am I going to do, do, do? They're getting ready to cut it off. But somebody say, trust in the Lord, and you get all that. Well, your lights ain't about to get cut off. Your lights ain't about to get this. And you don't know what I've been through. It don't matter what you've been through. Amen. We need to believe what the Bible says, that my God shall supply all. According to his riches and glory, I will believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe when God said he's able. I'm going to lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge my God and God will direct my path. I believe the report of the Lord. Amen, amen. I've been in this situation of going to the doctor. And the doctor said, Brother Green, there's 17 tumors on both kidneys. Amen, amen, amen. You was there, Ruth. Uh, amen. The doctor said, and I'm looking, they said, you got the Von Hal lip, Von Hal lipo disease. I said, what, what's something? They said, we think the Hatfields and McCoys had this. I said, I'm a black Hatfield. <laughs> Jim Bean and I'm good. <laughs> Amen. But that, but I didn't believe the report of the doctor. Amen. I knew it to be true. But when it talks of believe, it's about trusting in it. Amen. I said, what you said may be right, but I serve a God. Now it doesn't mean that God won't operate through the doctor to bring his healing about. Amen. But that was old back in 2009, and I'm still here. Amen. 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 I will believe the report of the Lord. Then in 03, my little ticker didn't tick. And they found me on the bathroom floor downtown. And they took me and said I had a heart attack. And one week later, I came out without stents, without any kind of surgery. Because I will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter how things look. Yes. But it does matter where you're looking from. Yes. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It's who you're going through with and with. Amen. I will believe the report of the Lord. Because if you allow yourself to go through your troubles by yourself, honey, yes. you're not going to believe the report of the Lord. Right. But if you got Jesus walking with you, yes. if you got Jesus walking beside you, yes. and if my God said it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. But even if I didn't believe it when God said it, that is enough, honey. Because I will believe the report of the Lord. I got to believe the report of the Lord. Now, now my daughter brings home a report, and if it don't say A and B, and if it says D and C and D, then we got trouble, because I'm going to believe that report. <laughs> <laughs> she can talk about you say, I can hear it now. You say, certainly don't believe the report. <laughs> I'm not right here, so I got to bring this up now. <laughs>
when we find ourselves in bad situations, instead of looking down, I got to look up <laughs> and say, God, I can't fix it. I can't work it out. But I know that you can and you will. You see, the difference between Caleb and them compared to the other ten is that they didn't look at things from the valley level. They went up to the mountaintop and looked down on the giants. And when you look down from the mountaintops, even the giants look small. When you look down from the mountaintop into the valley, all your situations look small. The problem that we have, we stay down in the valley when we need to get up. <laughs> On the mountaintop, I'm gonna be careful this time. <laughs> We're gonna get up and take a look from the mountain view. <laughs> I ain't going no further than this. That's how I fell. Amen. We're gonna get up and look from. I'm not walking on the side. You ain't have to hold me up, young man. This time, I say I'm sick and tired. You pass and get on the thing. Get on my shoulder. Who's report when you believe, son? <laughs> you got to don't believe me. You got to believe that you know I'm gonna get on it again. Now we will believe the report of the Lord. You don't need to worry about your place of view. God got a lot of points of view. You need to get to the position where you can see how God sees things. And then your problems are so big. Then your problems are so giant. When you look at from God's viewing point, oh, people have a lot of point of view. God just has a lot of viewing points. We believe the report of the Lord. Of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to believe the report. Of the Lord. Amen. We're going to believe the report of the Lord. You see, why is that report so important? If the Browns would have paid attention to the report of Johnny Manziel while he was at Texas A&M, they would have known then he parted. They would have known then that he came from a rich family and thought he was privileged and get away with anything. Then they wouldn't have been surprised about the report that they get. Amen. If the Texans would have known that my Kansas City Chiefs were as good as they were, then the report would have happened. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, young man. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I ain't going to say nothing about the Spurs yet. <laughs> amen. Whose report will you believe? You know when the report comes out, folks try to deny the reports. They try to say, well, that's not how it is. You know, you hear the politicians while they're talking, and they'll say something, right? And then when they get caught saying it, they say, well, that's not what I meant. The report, they didn't, they didn't say what I meant. They really didn't write it down. Whose report will you believe? We got to believe that God is able. We got to believe that God is a strong tower, that the righteous run in and they are safe, that God is a never present help in the time of trouble, that my God can, my God will do anything but fail, that my God is my alpha, my God is my omega, my beginning, my end, my first, my last, that which was, that which is, that which is to come. My God is the Almighty. My report says that He is my Jehovah, my Jehovah Jireh, my Yahweh, my Elohim, my Jehovah. My healer, my provider, my deliverer, my way maker. That's what my report says. My report says, God can do anything. And this is my report right here. It's written from Genesis to Revelation that, that whatever I need, my God's got it. Whatever I want, my God can supply all of my needs. That my God can do any, 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 any thing but fail. Doors of blessing and close doors of destruction. Yes. Sir. 
I believe God will hear me when I pray early in the morning, yes. late in the afternoon, deep in the midnight hour, that God will hear my cry. I believe the report of the Lord when it said that God is able. I believe the report of the Lord where he said, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I believe the word of the Lord when he said that I can do anything. He said, I am the Lord, nothing is too hard for me. I believe the report when he stood up and said, oh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, to give recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And he closed the book and said, this day is fulfilled in your ear. I believe this day I came to heal the sick. This day I came to raise the dead. This day I came to set the captive free. I will believe Amen. Yes. the report of the Lord.